there's one design pattern that gets a lot of flack. You guessed it, the singleton, and rightfully so. I'm going to tell you why you should never use it, especially not in Python. There is a generalized version of it called the object pool, and that is a different story. Let's dive in. If you're new here and you want to become a better software developer, gain a deeper understanding of programming in general, start now by subscribing and hitting that bell like there's no tomorrow, so you don't miss anything. Design patterns are generally grouped into three categories, creational, structural, and behavioral. Starting at the end, behavioral patterns focus on allowing you to choose between different algorithms or how particular parts of your application should communicate. Strategy and Observer are two examples that I discussed in previous videos. Structural patterns explain how to assemble objects and classes into larger structures while keeping those structures flexible and efficient. So those patterns deal more with how to organize different parts of your application. Think of the bridge pattern as an example. And finally, creational patterns deal with providing control over creating objects in various ways. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. There are several creational design patterns. I won't cover all of them in this video, but one of them is the singleton. You don't need it in Python, but it's good to know that it exists. So you can recognize it and then remove it from the code you're working on. The idea of the singleton is that it allows you to have one single instance of a class. You can use it to represent things for which you need only one, like a graphics device manager, a logger or an event manager. Here's a class diagram. It relies on two mechanisms of object orientation. The first is a static or class method that gives access to an instance of the class. The second is the private access modifier that allows access to a method only from inside the class. By making the constructor private, only the static method inside the class can create an instance. And so the class has full control over who creates an instance of it, in theory. In practice, not all languages provide support to create a singleton in this way, and some languages need a more complicated setup to make sure you're not inadvertently creating a new instance. For example, in C++, a class can have multiple constructors, including a copy constructor, and operator overloading may also create new instances, so you need to block all those things. And Python doesn't have access modifiers, so you can't make the initializer private. You can still create a class that behaves like a singleton though, with some trickery. This is an example of how you could, in principle, create a singleton in Python. The mechanism I'm using here is a meta class. You can see that the singleton class inherits from type, which makes it a meta class. An example I made here is the logger. So logger in this case has a meta class singleton and that makes it a singleton. Let me explain how this works. So, Meta class has a list of instances that it maintains. So the idea is that for every class that is a singleton, you maintain the instance in this dictionary. The mechanism I used here is that I added a call method to the singleton meta class. And the result is that call method allows us to add parentheses and call the instance. In this case, the instance is a meta class. So actually what this does is behave a bit like a constructor. And we need to do it in this slightly contrived way because we need access to the class. So we can store the class. And this is what the code looks like if there is not yet an instance of that class inside the instances dictionary. We create it and then we return it. So this means that practically speaking, there's only going to be one instance and the instance is stored here. Creating the instance looks also a bit contrived because we're calling it via the super construction here and that's needed because if we call it directly on class, we're going to end up in an endless loop because class again does this. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen. And then in the end, we return the instance that we're looking for. So what happens is I can now create a logger like so and then log something. And this is actually going to use this mechanism here to create the actual instance. And you see it works, it behaves just like a regular instance. I can create a second one, like this, and then also log something there. Let's run this. See, it works in exactly the same way, except now the difference is that because we have this singleton behavior, 
both of these variables, logger and logger2, actually refer to the same object. Let me show you. I'm going to print out the logger object and I'm going to print out the logger2 object. And as you'll see, they both refer to the object at the same address, so it's the same object. If logger wasn't a singleton meta class, so let's remove this, so don't need the parenthesis, then you see we get two different objects. So this is a mechanism to use meta class to create singletons. There are other ways to do it. For example, you could also use a decorator and create a singleton that way. I put a link to an article with a few examples in the description below. Singletons are considered an anti-pattern for several reasons. The first is that singletons break object-oriented design principles. Because if you inherit from it, this allows you to create multiple instances of that singleton by creating multiple subclasses, which shouldn't be allowed. Another issue is that you don't have control over creation. When you access the instance, you never know whether it's an existing instance or a newly created one. And that leads to another big issue. Testing code with singletons is really hard because you can't easily create a new, fresh instance for each test you want to run. And finally, singletons don't work well in multi-threaded applications due to a race condition where if multiple threads access the not yet instantiated singleton at the same time, you end up creating multiple instances. In Python, you shouldn't use a singleton at all because Python has modules, which offer most of the same functionalities and none of the problems I just talked about. In fact, I can't recall the last time I thought the singleton was a good solution to a design problem I had, in any language. The object pool is a pattern that's not in the Gang of Four book. It's a kind of generalization of the singleton pattern. Here's a class diagram. As opposed to the singleton, which allows only for a single instance of a class, the object pool manages a fixed number of instances. That's not possible with Python modules, and it can be useful in a few cases. In particular, if creating objects is expensive in your application and you need those objects only for a short time, the object pool could be helpful. Think of managing database connections or graphics objects containing lots of mesh data that are drawn over and over again. Let's look at a code example and then I'll tell you a few things you need to watch out for when using the object pool pattern. To demonstrate the object pool, I'm using a simple reusable class that represents objects that we can reuse. Let me create one of these objects and show you how it works. So the object actually does nothing and it simply has a test method. Let's run this code. The only thing the test method does is print out a message and it actually prints the ID of the object so we know what object we're dealing with. And you can see the result here. The object pool is responsible for managing a pool of objects. And the way you can do it is by maintaining two lists. One list of objects that are in use and another list of objects that are free. So let's create a class that does this work for us. Initially, the free and in use list are both empty, and now let's add objects to the free list. Next, what we can do is add an acquire and release method to manage when you can use those objects. I'm adding a type hint here to show that acquire returns a reusable instance. If the free list is empty, we should raise an error. If there is an object available, then we're going to move that object to the in-use list, remove it from the free list and return that object. First, make sure we have a reference to that object. So that's the first object in the free list. We remove that object from the free list and add it to the in-use list. And finally, we return the object. Releasing the object is similar, but the other way around, obviously. And that needs the object as a parameter.
This is the basis of the reusable pool. Now, instead of creating the object directly here, let's create a pool. And let's say we give it a size of two. So we have two reusable objects. And then we can use the acquire method to get objects. Let's run this and see what happens. There, we have an object and we're using it. Let's get a second object. Second object also works fine and you see you have a different ID, so that's a different object. Now if we try to retrieve a third object, we're going to get an error. Because obviously there are no more objects available. In order to make another object available, we have to release one of the objects we had before. So we're releasing the second object we retrieved, we're acquiring new object, and then let's call the test method again. There you see we have again two objects that we're using. Let me demonstrate that this R3 object is actually the same object as the one that we just released. So I'm calling here the test method on the two objects we have here. Oh, this should be below that obviously. And then here we call again the test method. So you see that the second and the third time we do it, it's actually the same object because we released it here, we're acquiring it again and calling test on it. One thing you could do to make this a bit easier to use is to create a context manager that automatically acquires and releases objects for you. Let's create a context manager for this. The context manager obviously needs a pool. In the enter method, we're going to acquire an instance of reusable and return that. We're storing the object as a member in the contact manager so we can use it later on to release it again. And that's what we're going to do in the exit method. So we have our reusable pool and now what you can do is use with and then our context manager that gets the pool. This returns the object so we should give it a name here and then we're calling the test method on that object. The context manager makes sure that objects are acquired and released. So I can do this multiple times and every time the object is going to be acquired and released again. Now this reusable pool class, you could in principle turn that into a singleton, so you have access to it everywhere, but much better is if you don't want to use a class is to actually turn it into a module and then the module has the acquire and release functions and then you simply import those and use those. There's a few limitations to the example I just showed you. First, you can still create reusable instances outside of the object pool. Also, you could write code that uses an instance after you've released it. There are ways in Python to impose more control by using meta classes to, for example, block calling a method on an instance that's not been acquired from the pool, similar to what I showed for the singleton. Object pools can be useful, but you do need to be careful. First, you have to make sure when you release an object to the pool that it's also reset back to a fresh state, ready to be used by someone else. Your object pool, in the end, is responsible for resetting the objects. A second issue is that if you don't reset objects properly, you may end up leaking information. For example, an authentication token that wasn't cleared may give undesirable access to data. Multi-threading is also an issue with object pools, where multiple threads may end up using the same object at the same time. If you haven't done so already, join me on Discord for more in-depth discussions previews of upcoming videos and more. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon. Singleton, singleton. <coughs> so there we have two lists inside a repools. <coughs> By making the constructor method public, public, behavioral patterns focus on allowing you to choose between different algorithms or how different pat or how blah, 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 blah or how particular parts of your application should communicate.